Hey guys, this is Ethan. Welcome to your second lesson on nanoscience. Today's lesson, we're going to go over the timeline in nanoscience really quick. I want to do this because I'm going to throw a lot of technical things at you, a lot of names, a lot of dates, and you won't have to remember any of this precisely. Like, don't worry about like taking precise notes. You can if you want to, but I mean, don't worry about it. It's fine. I just want you to get a sense of how recent everything has happened. It's one of the most recent sciences compared to like biology and whatever else. So let's start in 59 with Richard Feynman. You really can't start the history of nanoscience without this guy. He gave this speech called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom at Caltech in 1959 in December. And it basically set off a lot of goals and challenges for miniaturizing things. He basically said, hey, nothing in the laws of physics say that we can't make things a lot smaller. Why aren't we doing that? And uh, he gave some challenges and people eventually did that. In 1974, this guy named Norio Taniguchi published a scientific paper called On the Basic Concept of Nanotechnology. This paper was about how, uh, how you could make things, like molecular things, at the level of molecules. It was the first time that nano the word nanotechnology was ever used, so he coined it. In 1981, the concept of SPM was invented at IBM by two guys named Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohr. Essentially, this is the first thing that they really had that could see and influence, like, move around things at the atomic level. This is important, obviously, because if you're working with this kind of stuff, you have to be able to see it and move it. So people say that the, the era of modern nanoscience really started in the 80s for this reason. So really, nanoscience is only like 30 years old or so. It's pretty young. In 1985, they discovered the buckyball, which is called... Buckminster fullerene, or just a fullerene, or C60, or carbon 60, there are like 60 names for it. This is carbon into a soccer ball, essentially. And it really is the exact same pattern on a soccer ball, so you can get out a soccer ball and look at it and be like, yeah, that's carbon 60. It's named after Buckminster Fuller, who was an architect who uh, popularized these geodesic domes. So yeah, they decided, hey, let's name it as long as possible of a name we can, just to confuse people. Because why not? In 1986, a guy named Eric Drexler published this book called Engines of Creation, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology. This book was kind of, kind of idealistic and introduced the idea, amongst other things, of molecular assemblers, which is kind of like, instead of saying, here's a big block of stuff, let's chip it away until we get to nanoscale, Drexler was saying, hey, let's make stuff out of atoms. Let's assemble things atom by atom by atom, hence assemblers. This might encounter some problems later on, but we're getting to that later. In 1989, this guy named Don Eigler moved atoms. And here's a picture of that. Can you guess what company he worked for? I hope you can. Anyway, this is 35 xenon atoms, and he chose xenon because it's a noble gas, and so it does not interact with itself or anything else, which is why he can move them around like this. It was also very cold, and it took a long time, I think. But it's really cool. This is the first time that uh, a human has just moved individual atoms which is kind of like a superpower. In 1991, this guy named Sumio Ijima came, uh, didn't, he didn't come up with carbon nanotubes, he discovered them. And these are really important, you can do all kinds of stuff like heat dissipation and tensile strength with these kind of stuff, and I'll get into that later, but they're really cool and really important. And finally, in 2000, the United States begins this program called the National Nanotechnology Initiative, the NNI. This is kind of like the US is saying, oh man, nanoscience is going to be so big in the future, we got to like throw money at this stuff. And for once, it's a good idea by the U.S. government, and so I think that's really notable to mention here, that they had a really good idea. How weird is that, right? That's the basic timeline of nanoscience right there, kind of the history. Really brief, because there's not a whole huge history to it. Hopefully you can go on and become some super famous nanoscience and add to it yourself. Until then, thanks for watching, please subscribe, and have a great day.